you know, that's kind of where I wanted to close this interview out. And I was going to ask you, you know, what advice would you give to a young exec? What advice would you give to a young manager? But it feels like you just said it because it, it, it begins and ends with treating people the way you want to be treated, doing the hard work. Those things come back to you. Those th- and, and, and what people don't realize, <laughs> in this game, the music industry is this small. Yeah. Everybody knows everybody. And I love your humility by saying, I've been hot, I've been cold, I've been hot, I've been cold, and I've been hot again. But the reason you yeah. keep getting chances is because when you were hot, you did right by people. Your name is everything in this game. And I don't think people understand that. People think that I got the hot hand and it's going to last forever. Right yeah, now, I'm attached to the, to the hottest artist on planet Earth. This artist is Fish Grease. It don't last forever. But your name and your reputation does. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's what's going to either keep you working or have you looking for another job or, or I'm doing real estate now, which mm-hmm. everybody from the industry seems to do once they leave. Uh, everybody they goes into fucking... That's the problem with management. I will say this. The problem with management is there's no barrier of entry. Meaning no. anybody can pick up a, a, a phone and say they're a manager. And it sucks because every industry person, when they lose their job, like falls back in, they're going to start managing. And it's kind of insulting to real managers because y'all think y'all can just hop in and do this. And I watched them mess up careers because the thing about management is you, you are playing with someone's dream. You, you really got to understand that for you, it might just be a job or somebody you're picking up or a check, whatever, however you look at it. But it is somebody's dream. And so I think they deserve a certain amount of respect and, and, and real effort if you're going to do it and not something you're practicing or playing with. So your name, your reputation, um, they mean things. If you're new, if you're trying to figure out how to do this, go sit and meet people. Take the rejections. Everybody's not going to sit with you. You might want to go sit with with one of the top lawyers at a firm and he don't know you and he ain't got time and he ain't gonna sit with you but you might be able to sit with one of the smaller lawyers at the firm who just got there and now you and him kind of both starting at the same time build your relationship with him when he starts to get hot he might send you clients you start to get hot and you might send him project clients you guys can look up and y'all can be 20 years having been doing business together may go five or six without talking or doing business but one day you get an artist and you're like, yo, they need a good lawyer. And you like, I know who's a good lawyer. And you call him. That works with everything. Promoters, radio people, lawyers, everything that you come across in this industry, you kind of got to build your reputation. Now, it's hard to be cool with everyone or be on point with everyone. For example, me. I know who a bunch of the heads of, of the record, like of the radio stations are. And I know them because I've been doing this long enough they know me. But I didn't always nurture that relationship because I was fortunate and blessed to have great promo people working um, on my projects, especially in the Lionel, Lionel Rittenauer, um, just all of them, like all these dope promo people that they were good at what they did with radio and we talked. So they, it was like, yo, we need to do this for the station. We need to do that. And I trusted them because radio was one more beast I didn't need to, I wasn't trying to take on. I knew all the people on touring. I knew all the lawyers. I knew, I knew other areas. Boom. Radio, I kind of trusted. Some people in natural relationships with radio people, boom, work in your radio relationships. But if you're a new manager, get out there. Go places. Read magazines. Don't just read the blogs. Understand the numbers. This is a digital game now. Understand, like, know how much Spotify pays, know how much YouTube pays. Understand, because knowledge is power as a manager, because your artist is going to have a lot of questions. And if you get, if your artist keeps asking you questions, you don't know no answers, he's going to lose faith. 
and you don't ever have no answers, then why am I with you? And then he's going to talk to someone who either really knows the answers or bullshits way through the answers, but you're going to look like you just ain't know. So even when you don't have an artist, even when you're not hard, even when you're trying to learn who the players are, learn who's out here, who's making moves, who's signing, who's not signing, who do you need to know at iHeart? It should be a constant education as a manager. You as a manager should never stop learning. This business evolves. You need to be involved with it. There's a change coming. You need to know how to be see that change and either position your artist or yourself to be on the, on the cusp of that, whatever. But this isn't just about, oh, I got an artist and it's getting them a deal and then the money's going to start rolling in. No, getting a deal is actually kind of the easiest thing to do now and the worst. Because that first check or only check you're going to get from the label, that's it. Everything else is going to be back on you. That's Labels right. don't do shit. They ain't doing shit these days. They're crying broke and making more money than ever. So if you're a manager, you better know what management does now. That means you are doing the artist development. That means you are finding people to work with you and ways to get your artists out there because the label ain't doing shit or the label ain't thinking about your artists until you get enough spins and you you. you you're getting enough uh, followers and your monthly listeners up. Your job as a manager these days is to be able to get your artists hot enough that somebody wants to sign them. So what does that take? It's not the same game Blue Williams had to play. I had to run into L.A., Sylvia, Lior, Kevin, get them excited about something, get a deal, work the building, boom. That ain't today's game. Today's game is you need to figure out how to get all them DSPs hot, when to drop records, when to drop content, how do you get your artist's name out there? What stages? As a manager, you're doing probably more work today or just about as much work with, as, with the least amount of support from a label structure than ever. So before you start claiming your manager or before you, you think this shit is a game, study. Figure out what it takes. Do you have what it takes? Is it what you really want? Are you ready to, to swing without a net? Or do you need to find a building to get into and get you a check? It's a lot of self-reflection i think as a manager you should take before you become one as opposed to just jumping in and thinking okay this is what i'm gonna do some people get lucky i know some idiots that are managers they would just stand in the right place when the artist got hot and the artist oh. trusted them and the label protects them because the label just tells the manager what they're going to do and the manager goes okay i'm gonna ask him and then the artist says okay and the manager just sort of gets to ride along for success you might get lucky, and there have been people, a lot of artists and managers I've seen get like that. It doesn't last, though. It doesn't. It's not going to last a long time. Eventually, either you're going to get exposed, label's going to decide that that artist needs a bigger manager that knows more, and then those same people that were protecting you are going to become the snakes that are getting you out the door. So if you're not educating yourself, if you're not reading, if you're not reading the trades, if you're not reading... Fuck these blogs, but reading things that really can also give you some business knowledge and understanding and perspective, then then you're losing to somebody that's hungrier than you that is doing that. So. I mean, you just dropped so much wisdom and so much knowledge, man. We ended there. Like, I, I almost don't know where to go because... <laughs> You just said a mouthful, and if anybody, if they didn't hear nothing else you said, Blue, understand something. This is not the 80s. It's not the 90s. It's not even early 2000s. The labels <clears throat> do nothing these days. You have to build yourself. The labels are jumping after, but they're mm -hmm. looking at you to build yourself. And if you mm -hmm. don't have a great team behind you, if you don't have people that are ready to run through walls for you, if you don't have people who understand the game, and if they don't understand it, they're willing to put in the work to understand it, mm -hmm. you, you're going to be one of, of, of the millions of talented wannabe artists out there that the world has never heard. But Blue, I appreciate you joining me this week, kid. Uh, Man, thank you for having me. And, 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 and I know people, somebody out there is going to benefit from it. That's all I can hope, man. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. We got to do this again, brother. Anytime, sir. Anytime, brother. My man. Thank you. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, 
feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.